Hi and welcome. Today we will be seeing how to move a player using the player input component of the Unity's new input system. Welcome to Vinex Studio. Let's start making games. Now in the earlier tutorials of the new input system, we saw that after creating an input action asset, you have to generate a C sharp script and then you have to reference that script in your own script in order to access the action that you created. Now there is a simpler way to do it and the way is using the player input component. So I have a cube and a plane in my scene. So let's try to move the cube using the player input component. Now the cube has a box collider and a rigid body already attached to it. So let's add the player input component. And remember if you have not installed the new input system, this component will not be available. So you have to go to the package manager and install it. If you don't know how, just check out our video on getting started with Unity's new input system. So let's go ahead and add the player input. So once you add the player input, you can see that it requires an input action asset. So if you don't have an input action asset already made, then you can just click on create action and Unity will create a default input action asset for you. So you can just give it a name and save it. Let's just name it as test asset. This is the default input action asset. It has the move, look and fire action. And these are configured for gamepad, keyboard and mouse, XR controller and joystick. So this is done for all three, move, look and fire. And the default action asset also gives you an option to select the control scheme. So if you're targeting only one device, then you can just select that control scheme and leave it. So the player input also has this option. So once you select the action map, it gives you the option to select the scheme. And if you want to leave it in auto switch, then the player input component will select the scheme based on the device on which you're playing the game. So rest all will remain same. As you can see, the message below the behavior parameter has changed. And once you select the action map, the, there'll be a number of uh, functions displayed. And these functions are nothing but the actions that we created. The player map had the move, look and fire. So we have the on move, on look, on fire functions you can just call these functions without having to subscribe to them but the only requirement is that the script should be attached to the same game object to which the player input is connected if i go ahead and switch this action asset with the asset that we created in our previous tutorial so it has a jump action now i have an option to select the on jump function so since we are going to move the player we'll be using the test asset so next thing we have to do is add a script so let's add the player controller here. Now let's open it for editing. So as you can see in our older script, we had to create an object for the input action asset. Then we had to enable the action map and then we had to subscribe to the action. Now in case of using the player input, you don't have to do any of this. So we can just delete them. And only thing that you require all the three functions. So let's just go ahead and create void on look. So we'll just debug log to check how it works. So we'll just say look. Now let's create another function called on move. And we'll debug dot log. Uh, we'll just say mode. Now let's create another on fire function. Sorry, fire. Yep. Then let's debug log and we are going to say fired so our script doesn't have anything else we just have three functions on look on move and on fire so let's go back to unity let me just open the console window and if i play the game so as you can see when i move my mouse the on look function is called and when i click on the screen the fired function is called and when i press the wasd key on my keyboard the mode function is called if you just want to debug log, then you definitely don't require the unity engine.input system. But if you want to get the value of the vector 2 that we have configured, so if you just go back and take a look at the input action asset, and if you select move, you can see that it gives a value of vector 2. And similarly, look also has a value vector 2, and fire is a button. So it's basically a Boolean. So to get the value, you require this namespace, unity engine.input system. Now, We'll just try to move the camera based on our mouse movement. So in the on look, you have to pass in a variable of type input value. And since this is going to be rotation, I'm going to call this rot. 
Now we need to get the value from root because it is of type input value and you have to get the vector2 from it. So it's going to be vector2 and we'll just call it as input rot. And to get the value, you just have to say rot dot get. So then you have to do this and you have to type in the type of the value, which is vector2 and that's it. So now you've got the vector2 value, but we need to assign that to the camera. So for that, we need the camera. So we'll just do serialize field and we'll say game object of type camera. And I'll just call it cam. So cam rotation will be a vector three. So we'll just say vector three cam rot equal to cam dot transform dot rotation. So since we need vector three, it should be dot Euler angles. So now we have a vector three. So we'll just add the value that we have got from the on look function to the camera's rotation. So for that, we'll just say camrot dot x plus equal to. And since this is rotation, uh, the mouse movement in x direction should rotate rotate the camera in the y axis, and the mouse movement in the y direction should rotate the camera in the x axis. So this is going to be rot dot x. Sorry, rot dot y. Sorry, this is not rot. This will be input rot dot y. And cam rot dot y plus equals input rot dot x. So now we have added. Now all that is left is to assign it cam dot transform dot rotation. Sorry, rotation equal to quaternion dot Euler. And inside we are just going to say cam rot. Now let's go back to Unity and check if it is working. So first we need to assign the camera. Then let's play the game. So with my mouse, I'm able to rotate my camera. So next thing is we'll try to move the game object with this. So first thing is we'll have to get the input value, which will be pause. Okay, then we need a vector two which will be say input post let's say this is equal to post dot get and we're going to say vector 2 so now that we have the input post we just have to move the player so since it has a rigid body so let's get the rigid body so rigid body rb and we need the start function to get the component so it will be rb equal to get component rigid body now here we need the vector 3 which will be our player position which is equal to transform dot position uh, we'll just take the x and y of vector 2 and add it to the x and z axis of the vector 3 because we'll be moving in the x z plane so it's going to be player pause dot x plus equal to input pause dot x so we'll just copy this and we'll paste it in this case it is going to be z and here it's going to be y now we have a vector 3 so we can just say rb dot move position and we just have to pass in the vector 3 which is our player pos okay uh, there is one problem with this the on move function is only called when you press the button and if you keep holding on to the button the on move function will not be called so that being said let's go back to unity and see if it works so if i press the button the player is able to move but the only thing if i hold the button nothing happens so if you want to move the player when you hold the button, then I guess the old input system was better in that case. So this is the only disadvantage that I feel in the new input system using the player input component. Other than that, the player input component is really helpful and very easy to use. So if you have any questions regarding the new input system, you can leave them in the comment box below. 
Thank you and see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.